I'm Debbie Downer. I'm from Boston Roller Derby, and I'm here with two friends and league mates. Um, and we are going to talk to you about Boston Roller Derby. All right, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, hi, I'm Vivi Sonicist. Uh Hi, I'm Hicks Buzzum. All right, so can you uh, tell me a little bit about Boston Roller Derby, why you like skating with the league? Uh, so what I like about skating with the league is really, uh, I feel like it's a good community of people um, where we all kind of come together and do something that we all enjoy together. Sure. Uh, more than anything else. Yeah, so it's, a, it's actually a pretty big community. We have over 100 skaters and officials and volunteers. Um, we've got four home teams that play against each other, uh, often right up the road at Shriners in Wilmington. Um, I'm on the Nutcrackers. Um, Phil's is on the Wicked Pisses. Downers on the Harbor Horrors. And we don't have any uh, Cosmonauti representatives here. Um, and then we also have travel teams that play um, around the state, around the country. Have we ever traveled internationally? Uh, Canada. Canada, that's true. <laughs> we've, gone over, we've gone over the border to play Montreal. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really great. Yeah. So do you want to tell me a little bit about how you got started with Boston Roller Derby? So I started skating uh, 10 years ago, which feels like a long time ago. Um, yeah, I was looking for I was looking for a sport. I had played a little bit of hockey, but not a lot, um, and was kind of looking for something a little more year round and also a lot less cold. Um, and yeah, I found out about roller derby. I was like, I think I pretty much just typed into Google Boston roller derby, and Boston roller derby came up. It was great. Um, I did the like training program at the time, um, and yeah, I've been skating ever since. For me, it was. Um... I started just before all the COVID lockdowns. Um, basically, one of my friends was like, hey, let's go to this roller derby. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, that sounds great. And I, um, I grew up playing sports like hockey, so I have a skating background. Um, and when I saw a game, I was like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> and I joined and everything locked down, but then we started up again, and now I'm playing like right Yeah. So I started with Boston in 2014 in one of our training programs. And back then it was uh, tryouts just to get into the most basic level. Um, but I've been skating ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's pretty wild to think that it's almost 10 years. A long time. <laughs> old timers now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so let's see. Do you want to tell me, tell us a little bit about the training program? Oh yeah, so uh, training programs have gone through a few iterations in the last uh, 10 years, but our uh, current training model is taking skaters who have no skating background and getting them to safety to skate with the league, either you know scrimmage eligibility or joining in in league practices. Um, so we meet people at the level they are at. Usually that means that people do have some training background, but we do have a lot of skaters who come to us with absolutely no skating skills. Uh, and we teach them everything they need to know to skate, to take uh, contact or, you know, make contact with other people and to play roller derby. Yeah. How has your training experience been? I mean, you're the most recent to come up through the program. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, it definitely was very thorough. Um, yeah, it covered everything that you need to learn to start playing and be safe. Yeah, um, and help. <laughs> um, another aspect of our training program is getting officials ready for officiating, learning how to skate and how to learn the rules. Um, Higgs, you do some officiating too. Yeah, I do a little bit of officiating. So I mostly do. Um, off-skate officiating, non-skating officials, because uh, there's a lot, if you just think about any sport, there's a lot of things that need to be done to run the game. Um, so in terms of like tracking what lines have gone out, tracking penalties, um, you know, keeping the score for the game and like the time for the game, the official clock and all of that. So there's a, there's a whole crew of non-skating officials for each game, about 10 of them. Uh, and then there's also a skating officials crew of seven. Um, that watches the game and uh, gives out penalties as they see them, um, keeps track of points for the jammers, those are the people in the track who score points, um, and keeps track of some other like things like the pack. There's a there's a lot there's a lot of rules. 
Yeah. Well, that brings me into another question. What position do you primarily play? I'm typically a blocker, but I do have dreams of being a jammer. <laughs> like, I'm a blocker, except when uh, there's not enough jammers at scrimmage, and then I'll jam. Uh, I'm primarily a jammer, um, yeah. but I want to learn to pivot and block. Yeah. <laughs> so a blocker is somebody who blocks the jammer from getting by, and a jammer is the person who is eligible to score points. They're the ones that you'll see traveling around the pack. And then the pivot is the person who has the stripe on their helmet, and they are eligible to become the jammer if the jammer does need to pass the star. So those are the three different types of positions. Uh, in gameplay, we have five skaters on the track at a time, one jammer, one pivot, and three blockers. Uh, so that's how you, you know, play roller derby. Uh, can you tell me about your favorite part of playing roller derby? Uh, favorite part? I, for me, I would say um, definitely like the challenge of, I, there's just so many athletic people, like all competing to, <laughs> you know, stop each other or get through. Um, definitely one of my favorite things is really the communication that happens too, mm -hmm. like working together with your teammates to either, for me, get through the pack or to get the jammer through the pack, um, or to block the other jammer and guide the other jammer to your blockers. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I'd say definitely that like satisfaction of like working together and being like, we stopped the jammer, we held them, like, you know, is, is really is really great. If your jammer gets out, gets all the points, and uh, that's a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I guess maybe not for the jammer that we're talking. <laughs> Yeah, how does it feel? <laughs> yeah, being exhausted and stopped by such strong. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like my favorite part of roller derby is, um, I think so often like women are not encouraged to take up space or to be strong or to be athletic and forceful, and um, roller derby has given me the opportunity to be strong, be like. Uh, a presence, take up space, be really aggressive with my body, and it feels really good to do that. Um, I find like I am a totally different person on the track than <laughs> where I am off the track, for sure. Um, so do you want to tell me a little bit about our current season? Right now we're in the middle of our home team season. Yeah, so we had um, one home team game at Shriners. And then we will have two more um, actually in Everett, which is great in the city. It's on public transit um, at uh, Allied Veterans Memorial Rink. Um, that's where we're currently practicing. Um, it's got a lovely concrete floor, which I'm very happy about. Um, and so, yeah, we'll have two games there, one in April on the uh, 22nd. 22nd. Yeah, 22nd, yep. And then one in May. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll have a June game back at Shriners. Um, but this is all, yeah, the championship game will be at June in Shriners, Wilmington, right up the road from here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I bet all the, all the details are posted on our, on our website, right? Yeah. Which is bostonrollerderby.com. Uh, and then more up-to-date information is always posted on our social media, which is Boston Roller Derby across all platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we also have travel teams. I know we all have had a place on travel team over the last few years, so, um, on travel team, we you mentioned earlier, we travel locally, regionally, internationally. Um, yeah, when does the travel team season start back up again? And when does kind it usually like run? Mid summer. So I think we'll have a couple of travel team games in the fall. I don't think the dates are set yet. Right. Um, but yeah, there will be a couple of travel team dates in the fall, uh, and we'll probably also do some traveling as well. Yeah. If you're, if you're not super local, we might be coming to a city near you. Yeah. Um, and then we also have our tournament coming up in August, Lobster Roll. Oh, yeah. yeah, which is... That'll be a travel team. Yes, so that'll we'll be a travel have, team. We'll have teams from across the country to play us. Yeah. And then you can cheer for Boston. It's really easy to decide. If you're, if you're coming to our home team games, then you have to decide which of our four home teams to support. Yeah. But if you come to our travel team games, it's just it's Boston sports, right? Yeah. So if you're a super fan and maybe you want to get involved, how would somebody go about getting involved with Boston Roller Derby? Um, so I would say check out our website, come to a game, talk to people. Um, there's many ways, right? You can you can join the training program, you can skate with us, you can um, you can officiate, uh, you can just be a volunteer. Um, we have you know people who help us coordinate things for bouts, coordinate merch, whatever it might be. Um, we're always looking for 
helpful. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think we have an email to like info at Boston. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Dot com. That's yeah. pretty much if you have any like broad questions, we go there. Yeah. I always say there's a place for everyone at Boston Roller Derby. Yeah. yeah. Whatever your talent is, we can definitely use it. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. mean, that's one of the things I like most about it is just it's like a community of people that yeah. like so many different backgrounds and so many different things that they can bring in. Yeah. And it's not just all of us. Yeah, that's definitely true. Someone's going to design our merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we need people who are good at math for stats, and we need people who are uh, good at keeping calm and chaos for bench management. Mm -hmm. Photographers, videographers, we're always looking for help. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so let's see, is there anything else about Boston Roller Derby that maybe somebody who's never seen or heard of us would need to know? I am putting you on this. I feel like you have to come watch a game. Like yeah. you have to, you have to come watch a game to see see what it's like. I, I feel like it's kind of like someone mashed together, you know, rugby and uh, and hockey on skates. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really it's just really fun. Like you're just like, what's what's happening the first time you watch a game? People are hitting each other. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think that takes us into a couple demos, so we can demo some drills and skills for you. We gotta go put on all our safety gear, which we have laid out here, because um, we don't want to hurt ourselves when we fall. So we're gonna yeah. go put on our skates and safety gear real quick, and then we'll, we'll run some skating drills. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, it was good to talk to you both. Uh, I'll see you in a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I am back with my teammates, Higgs and Pills, and we have put on all of our gear. So some of the most basic uh, gear that we have to wear all the time are helmets, uh, wrist guards, elbow pads, knee pads, and then of course skates. People choose to modify these as they wish, and then we also wear mouth guards while we're playing roller derby. <laughs> So I'm going to be the jammer for this demo, and you can tell that because I've got a star on my helmet, um, and Downer and Pills are going to be blocking me. Yeah. Um, so a couple of basics. Um, if Pills is blocking me, I can hit her in the side. I can hit her um, here. What I cannot do is hit her directly in the back. That would be a back block. Um, I also can't just like elbow her out of the way um, or hit her with my head or hit her in the head. That would be all very unsafe and dangerous. So all those things are penalties. Uh, so basically, I'm going to try and use my hips and my shoulders to move her out of the way so that I can get through and I can score points. Um, but then, of course, Downer is also here trying to stop me. Yes. So my role as a blocker is to keep the jammer from getting by. Pills and I work together to stop that from happening. We can use all parts of our body to make that happen, except for our hands and our feet and our heads. Uh, and then uh, we'll be super successful blockers. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> all right, all right. Ready? Let's go. Beautiful. That's great. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to do it maybe one more time? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit over here. Right. And you have to make sure that you're not blocking them with your arm, and that's why I have to pull back like that, for example. Yeah. You can't use your arm to stop them. Yeah. Okay. So. One of the most exciting parts about watching roller derby is seeing some really cool hits. Uh, this is usually what is going to keep a jammer from moving forward or keep them in place. Uh, one of the moves that we do is like a J hit where we're using our hips to uh, propel the other skater in a certain direction. And so um, this is what makes the crowds go wild. Uh, <laughs> what you want to do is get your body nice and low. So that's going to give you a lot of stability. I like to get myself positioned nice and underneath the skater. And then using the side of my body, I'm going to lift. Oops. Just for 
effect. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use my body to move pills out of the way, but I'm going to be very forceful and uh, do a nice hit. Uh, so what I like to do is position myself underneath pills and I'm going to use the side of my body to lift her up and out of the way. And I take her space and then I'm nice and strong. things can we do? Can't do an apex case. jump. No. Yeah. Do you want to do like a footwork move to go around? Like do you want to like on me do like one of those like flip around? Nope. Yeah. Just just here. Like I'll show you but then. So like you're like skating on them. You just like do this and then you push off on them. You, you no, I give you a little bit of a star. I see you don't need a star. I don't know how to do skates. Okay, here. Okay. Do you want them on me or pills? Whatever. We're different colors, so I'll come here. I'll come here. Okay, you hitting this one. Okay. Yeah. That's a, good, that's a good move to get around someone. So one of the moves that we can use to get around other skaters or opposing skaters as jammers or blockers is uh, some footwork. So uh, we can uh, change our skates in the direction that they're facing in order to uh, propel ourselves around that skater. And then just to seal the deal and get ourselves totally off of that blocker, we can throw in a little shoulder hit there. So this is a demo of that move. Uh, other things, so uh, you'll often see skaters use their toe stops to manipulate or to maneuver around the track. Um, we don't use our toe stops to stop. We kind of use them as another like uh, method for traveling forward. So you'll see sometimes pills will dance on her toe stops on the line. Uh, you can also use your toe stops to run up the line, either facing one direction, so like this. I'll do it facing this way. <laughs> uh, what else can you do on your toe stops, Bills? I can't do the flip turn that Kim can do. Flip turn, like the, a like, spin. The like, the like, plant your foot and turn the ground. I can't do that. <laughs> It's like a jump. Yeah, there's like it's a, going. There's down. like a ballet. Oh, there's like a ballet jump. Not down. Okay, maybe we've reached the end of our uh, our knowledge. Yeah, that that ballet jump. Okay. Yeah, I can't do it. I don't, can't actually do it in a small space. Yeah, I'm like a man. Oh, no. it's exactly. So. Uh, one thing that you'll see during a game is a shirt whip or a body whip, which is usually where another skater will use their own teammate and propel themselves off because of their momentum. So we're using a little bit of physics here. Uh, if I'm going to do a body, uh, like a body whip, I'm going to use pills and propel myself forward. If I want to use pills, jersey. I'll hang on. Pills is gonna stay nice and strong. Uh, so if you've seen the movie Whip It, <laughs> might have. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, what we're talking about there. One of the few moves in the movie that is still legal in roller derby. Yeah, you can't go around elbowing people, but you can grab your own teammates and use them to help you. You can put them in front of the jammer. I've definitely been thrown in front of jammers. Mm -hmm. um, or you can, you know, support them as they're trying to block. Or if you are the jammer, sometimes you can use your teammate as a battering ram and <laughs> drive the uh, hole through the blockers on the other team for yourself. Yeah. Uh, some common penalties that people get when playing roller derby are forearms. So that's if you use your forearms to either stop or propel yourself forward, stop another skater from moving forward or propel yourself forward. 
um, back block. So we mentioned that earlier, but that's hitting a blocker or another uh, skater straight down the center. I'm so sorry, straight down the center of their back, um, and that's to keep everybody safe. Uh, another uh, penalty is a direction of gameplay penalty. So all roller derby needs to be played in the same direction. So our feet are always moving in derby direction. Uh, your body doesn't have to be facing derby direction, but if at any time you are not moving in derby direction and you cause another skater to also not move in derby direction or to fall down, that would be a direction of gameplay penalty. Oh. Track cuts. Track cuts. We don't have a track here, but you can't just skate off the track, go around, and then come back in front of everyone, because then that would be really easy to score points. Right. So you have to stay on the track. Um, and then there are penalties that are based on where the other players are on the track. Uh, so the they can be out of play or out of bounds penalties, uh, and also uh, pack destruction. So if we don't have a majority of skaters from opposing teams within 10 feet of each other, you are not allowed to make contact with any other skater. So that would be a uh, blocking out of play or blocking out of bounds penalty because you have, to reform, you have to reform the pack in order to, to, in order to have legal gameplay, everyone needs to sort of be in the same zone with each other. Um, and if you commit a penalty, the referee uh, who has seen you commit that penalty will blow a whistle and let you know that you've received a penalty, um, and then you're going to have to go sit in the penalty box. Yeah. Um, well, there'll be some non-skating officials there timing your penalty to make sure you serve the whole time for your misbehaviors. How long do you sit? Uh, 30 seconds. Actually, only 30 seconds for a penalty. However, you got to get to the box and then sit down and then serve your 30 seconds and then get up and then you can return. So it ends up being a little bit longer in terms of how much time you are off the track. Yeah. Uh, skaters can accumulate seven penalties per game. Uh, and then if you cross that threshold, you are removed from the game. So there is an incentive to playing safe and clean uh, and not getting penalties. There's also only four blockers, so if one of you is in the box, it's a huge advantage for the jammer. I'm sure Pills can tell you that she would much rather go up against two or three blockers than a full line of four blockers. So um, when you are down because your teammates are committed penalties, um, the other jammer usually scores a lot of points. Yeah. yeah. I've been on the track when that's happened. And you flagged the last game you played. <laughs> it was you and you alone. Yeah. <laughs> Three of your blockers went to the penalty box. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, you did very well, considering it was just you. Yeah. It was. <laughs> but it would be, it would have been nice. It would have been play. nice to have friends. <laughs> yeah. So uh, our next game is in April, April 22nd. Yeah. And you can see us doing all of these moves uh, on the track, during warm ups, during gameplay. Uh, if you see us, say hi and ask us questions. We can't wait to see you. Yeah. I'll see you then. Hope to see you there. <laughs>